All right, hey guys, Jesse here with Chaos Tones. And today I'd like to talk to you about Deviant Drums, specifically how we can get the most out of it. So I'm assembling this video with some tips and tricks and things that we can do to get the best life that we possibly can have. <laughs> All right, so let's go check it out. Enough of my yapping, let's buggy. Turn up the saturation knob. Okay, so now we've increased the saturation and what's that that's done is shave off the transients, bring the low level up. So now we have a beefier drum sound and we've increased the perception of volume. That's the saturation knob and that's really nice, but we have individual drum saturation and it's not detailed in the manual. I haven't talked about it on the internet or anything. It's not in any books. So let's, <laughs> let's go into the snare drum, for instance. We can change the way the drum responds to the smash button with the trim knob. Watch this. Okay, I didn't change the volume of the snare, but I did crush down on the transient and create a larger sounding drum without any extra volume. So... If we want a bigger sounding snare drum, we can do that really easily just with this. And we can start to drive the smash button in a way that we can't do with just the global saturation knob. And of course, this is available on every drum. Multiple ways to get different saturation. So let's go over to uh, self-destruct. It's a fairly brutal snapshot. Come over to the eye and drop the max polyphony down to something like three. And so now, every drum hit is going to stop the overlap between the other drum hit. So now we have this whole level of really prompt articulation that happens because we dropped the max polyphony down to three. It's a world of options for you. Go nuts. Finding your ideal snare. There's 48 different drum sounds that we have available to us and sometimes that can feel overwhelming. If you're on a native instrument's control, there's a knob that says select on it. And that select knob allows you to toggle between the drums uh, with a knob and go through the different snare sounds, kick sounds, tom sounds, what have you. Okay, but one of the ways that I like to go through the snare drums, play the snare and then play the random key until I find the snare drum that is right for me. So once I found that, then I just roll with that. All right, so that's one way that we can go through the catalog of snare drums without having to have extra hardware or make any additional purchases. Okay, moving on. In contact, if we go to options and we go to engine, we can see that the default volume for the new instrument or volume reset is zero or neg six. Now I tend to keep it on zero, but if you are on neg six, you might be getting a different response out of your drum instruments. Almost every drum plugin developer uses this same trick. My init patch doesn't. Actually, if I go back to, oh, not user. Those are some of the ones that are coming up soon. So let's go back to zero. Okay, I, I, I'm not clipping, right? But if we were back down at Neg6 factory, let's go for, I don't know, Lux Metal. Well, if we take a look at the transients here, where they're peaking, that's Neg4.3. If I take this and go back to zero, then I will be clipping.
And that's not just specific to Deviant Drums, that's every instrument that you'll ever use in the contact ecosystem. So it depends on how you set up contact for your own sessions and your default parameters. So, you know. I didn't use any low pass or high pass filters in this instrument. I didn't include them. So let's take a look at contact and see what we have available to us. Uh, not even in just in contact. So for instance, I can come over here and I've already got it instantiated right here. You've probably already seen it. So this is something that I can do. There's latency free, it comes with the DAW and it's really effective. So if I find I've got too much low end, which I did include a lot of low end in the kick, just in case you need it. But that's not an included plugin. If you did want to recreate something like that, I'll just drop the low level and I'll find the lowest band and I'll just sweep up on the band instead of, uh, well, I'll just do that, right? So if you're using the full version of Contact, you can just go into your outputs and say, okay, I'm going into stereo out. Let me go into EQ and let me go into one band and, and do the same kind of premise. And, and so now I can affect the whole drum kit with the filters that aren't available in the instrument, but it's still available in Contact. So use whatever tools are necessary. Let's go back to the idea of saturation. I keep on going back to this because it's such a powerful control that we have. So if we go over to symbols and we do that same idea that we just did where we're shaving off the low end, especially with the symbols, we can take that to a pretty extreme uh, situation with the symbols to the point where they sound kind of tinny and kind of piercing. They don't sit very well, but we can create this separation between the drums and the cymbals and that's really helpful when we start cranking on the saturation knob. Here we go. Yeah, these sound way too bright, but that's okay because we can even start to drive the cymbals and have some fun with that. And so you can do more and then bring it back to a cohesive spot if that's what you wanna do. I got another one for you. Let's go back over to the self-destruct snapshot and so we can change the way that these key switches respond not just with the trim knobs and not just with the brutality knob but we can come over here and we can start playing with the input levels of the drums into the key switches. We can come back over here we can take the polyphony down like we mentioned before and we can drive the input of that particular key switch by lowering the volume of everything that comes before it. So if I do this, so there's a wide, super wide range of tonalities that we have available to us if we start playing around with some things that are less common that you might not even think about. It's an option for us, so why not use anything we can as an opportunity to create a different tonality? Yep, and so let's drive it back up. We can just go ape shit with it too. We don't even have to drive the inputs here into that. We could just do that with the master knob. And you, I can see that I've done that here, but. Or we could set this back to where it defaults to. And we could just bring the symbols down so they're approaching the key switches different. Yeah, so lots you can play around with there. Have fun.
obviously we don't have this symbols control on the symbol mixer but if we go over here and if we alt click we can drag these down in conjunction with everything else right and so they stay in alignment by the way you can do that with the drum side of things too on the drum mixer you can option or alt click and move things all right uh so you know you don't have to come over here and use these controls i'm not the boss of you <laughs> maybe some things that weren't so obvious and some of them that were feel like i'm forgetting something but all right guys i'm out all right does this seem look i'm not even a thing how is this even god